What's up, fight fans? This is Kurt DeVille with Counterpunch Boxing News. And I got some new news concerning Deontay Wilder. This is one of his first interviews he had on the 19th. Now it is the 20th. So this was last night or yesterday when this interview was recorded. And he went on to say that um, he gave his thoughts about Tyson Fury's deal. You know, he w he didn't seem surprised that the deal happened or shocked like a lot of people was, like we all were, you know, in the boxing game. Um, he went on to say that um, Tyson Fury's entitled to, you know, to sign with whoever he likes. You know, he doesn't think that um, he has to do the best for his family. He doesn't think that it will affect the fight. You know, we only time will tell if it does. You know, um, he did go on to say that it's actually Anthony Joshua's camp, you know, uh, should be worried about that fight being made with them because of um, because of the ESPN, you know, the rival ESPN and um, uh, the zone. OK, or, you know, Bob Arum and Eddie Hearn. So, you know, that that's the question he kind of rebuttaled back. He bounced back at uh, it, it was 78 sports that I seen it on. You know, they're real tight. They can get Deontay Wilder on the phone, you know, lickety split. So he did go on to say that he said that he doesn't feel that Tyson Fury really wants to fight him again anyway, because he takes something from the fighter when he does drop them to the canvas like he did Fury and other fighters. Um he feels that if Tyson Fury doesn't fight him, you know, it would be a real bitch move. You know, if he doesn't, you know, back to what he had to say about Joshua. He was like, well, Joshua, you know, how are you going to want to fight? Why you didn't want to fight me in America? And I saw this coming. Why wouldn't you want to fight me in America? But you're fighting a guy that's not a title holder. Well, that's easy. You know, if you look at the Tyson Fury fight and a lot of people thought that Fury won, and he got cheated, well, why would Joshua come over here and do the same thing? You know, Tyson took it upon himself to call out Deontay Wilder and come over here to America and fight Deontay Wilder. Now, let's say if Tyson Fury would have lost a, the, the decision and they would have awarded and gave the nod to Deontay Wilder, everybody would have been pissed off. But now, this is, since it's a draw, they still looked at it like, okay, this is still shady because of how the scorecards were scored. You know, well, why would you want that? Or why would why would Anthony Joshua in his position want to come over here to fight you in your backyard to give you that advantage? See, it's all about advantages, especially when you're dealing with dominant sides and people, you know, who call the shots. So the people who call the shots will not agree to something like Holmes team advantage. You know what I'm saying? That's not going to work. So I had to counterpunch that real quick for you guys. Anyway, back to the interview. Deontay went on to say about Tyson Fury. Um, Tyson Fury was absolutely his best that night. Let me stop right there. Now, he did go on to say the reasoning. He did explain. He said because Tyson Fury went through three training camps, Tyson Fury uh, had a year and a half to train for that fight, you know, and it, I guess if you look at it like that, you could think that way, but I don't believe that shit. I think that Tyson Fury wasn't at his best, like a lot of people would agree. You know, he was still overweight. However, even though he lost a lot of weight from his comeback, he wasn't at uh, uh, that sporting, at that fighting weight that he needed. And, and when you lose weight like that, you never really are. Have you seen people that gain weight and then lose a lot of weight very quickly? You have a lot of loose skin. Your body's not fully acclimated. Your muscles versus the car, the, uh, um, the marveling in your, your uh, muscles are not even the same. You know what I mean? The water weight. A lot of things are different. You have to adjust to that size again. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, a lot of things uh, have to happen. And how I don't see how he can justify or believe that Tyson Fury was 100% his best. You know what I mean? Like, however, I give him credit for wanting the fight. But then here's the deal. If Deontay Wilder felt he won the fight, why does he want a rematch so bad? 
Why is he so adamant on running it back, running it back? That's the analogy he, you know, he said. He was like, okay, if you're playing basketball game of 21 and you lose, hey, run it back. I want this fight back. This well, you know, if you feel you beat Fury, why are you so adamant on a rematch? That's my question to Deontay Wilder. Because it seems like to me you're uncomfortable with how things happen. Now, sure, he could easily say, well, you know what? I don't do draws because he did say that. He said, I don't do draws. I don't believe in draws, you know, so we have to run that back. But it's like if you thought you won and you thought you knocked this dude out, why are you so adamant on that mentality of fighting only Fury? You know, however, he did go on to say, well, between um, my stable of fighters and and uh, um, my crew, my or my camp, my team, we have enough fighters to fight for the next two or three years. No problem. He didn't say any names. He didn't specify. But if that's the case, he's going along. If the fight Fury fight doesn't happen now, guys, you know, um, he'll call him a coward. He'll call him a coward. He'll blast him, you know, and then he'll go back in his place. He'll go exactly where I thought he was going to go. He, you know, because if, when you start calling like out, oh, well, we got a lot of fighters that we could fight in our stable. Because that's what he said in that interview. That I'm not even worried about it. We'll move on. Well, he didn't mention Joshua. He didn't mention Dillian White. The only thing he did mention is, oh, well, we got a lot of fighters. You know, if those fighters had a name, he would have name dropped them at least. You know what I'm saying? Like, and that lets me know that you have no intention of fighting anyone probably in the top 10 ever. You know what I'm saying? Um, uh, maybe Adam Nadowski um, just knocked out Jarrell Miller. I know I butchered his name. That's not how you say it. But, you know, he was an opponent that caught up. That could be a, a decent challenge for Deontay. I would watch that. I'd be entertained by that. You know what I mean? But that's not pay-per-view worthy. That's not nothing that you want to throw on pay uh, to see TV. You know, but... You're looking at guys like that, you know, you got guys that are after you, pursuing you, you know. Um, it's crazy, you know. Uh, 78 did say something very interesting about deals, you know. Um, and this is a very good, this is what I want to cover with you guys. He mentioned like, hey man, somebody you know, on Al Heyman's side or somebody on your side of the street has to get you a deal. You got all these other fighters, you know. Now, now mind you, this is a biased person. So the way he's saying it, it's, it's to it's to blanket or to pacify De, uh, Deontay Wilder. You know, so he said it like this. He was like, um, well, everyone's getting deals off the strength of fighting you. The idea of fighting you. I'm like, well, first of all, Tyson Fury fought him. So let me counterpunch that shit. Tyson Fury fought him. Tyson Fury basically had a better story, a better uh, a better path. You know, his trials, his tribulations were a lot more interested, a lot more interesting than Deontay Wilder's. 40 fights with only one decent opponent. I'm sorry, make that two. Well, no, it was only one because he did fight 40 people. And a lot of people didn't know who the hell they were. They were all bums. A lot of these guys were bums. And then the more like guys like Jarrell Washington, he gets beat. He just makes Deontay Wilder look shitty. Um, who else? Uh, what's the Polish guy's name he fought? I forget now. But he got knocked out by... Um, damn... My memory is fleeting me. Um, but anyway, if you look at the fighters that he's fought, and they're continuing, they're they are constantly getting beat. That makes his record look worse. You know what I mean? The only person that he has still to this day is Luis King Kong Ortiz, and. He hasn't lost since then. He only has one loss, and that loss is to Deontay Wilder. That's a good win. That looks good on his resume, but that is not enough. So for 78 Sports to sit there and dick ride like he was doing, that's all he was doing. 
you know, well, these guys are getting contracts off the strength of you. How is it off the strength of you getting contracts and you don't have a contract yourself? You never had one. And Deontay Wilder did state that um, greatness takes time. And I'm like, well, greatness takes time? How much time? You got to be patient. Or you reading this shit from a script? Because it seems like, because he did have an interview because he got with his team after he heard the announcement. And then he was like, oh, man. He was like, yeah, man, we the champs. We on top. We winning. That sounds like, that really sounds like something someone w- was coaching to him. That sounds like something he heard from somewhere else. You know what I mean? We the champs. We the top. We, you know, I'm the champ. I'm, I'm, I'm on t- you know, I'm on top. But then he goes later on to say in this same interview, well, I'm just glad to be a part of it. That's what you should have said at the beginning, because I don't think you're at the top. You haven't had an endorsement. You might. We don't even know if the, the fight Tyson Fury fight's happening, because that's his saving grace. That's the only thing that can validate him. And he knows that. That's why he wants this damn rematch so bad. Let's counterpunch all this shit. You know what I mean? Tyson Fury was at his best. Come on, man. You know that's a lie. You know, and in fact, this is the trainer wanted him to push the fight back. If he wanted to push the fight back, why did, how the hell is he supposed to be convinced that he was at his best? That's what Deontay Wilder wants to believe or somebody's feeding him that shit. And someone told him that to make him feel better. See, the problem is when there's nothing wrong with having confident or positive people around you. There, I don't have a, you know, I, I don't have a dispute with that. But it's a difference between people giving you positive comments or giving you delusional comments or misleading comments. You know, the type of comments that uh, um, uh, Coach Cunningham did with Adrian Broner and made him think he was winning a fight and he wasn't. That type of shit. Knowing damn well, you know, you, your hype man only supposed to be your hype man, but your hype man can't be the people that really try to help you because they're not helping you when you're already on a losing, on a, in a losing position. And he's been in a losing position. And the same people that he's trusted are betraying him. It ain't Tyson Fury betrayed him. Because I heard some other clown say that shit. It's the management that's betraying Deontay. They're betraying him to the point where <coughs> where he's like, okay, um, hey, greatness takes time. And, I, and what's bad about it, how can't Deontay Wilder see this? You got a guy from over here in the UK signing a hundred million dollar deal to fight in the States, right? And that, not, that might not be him. And it might not be him because Bob Arum is co now co-promoting Tyson Fury. And he doesn't necessarily want that fight right now. He wants it to build. He said it himself. So that fight doesn't have to happen right now. It probably won't. And and what's sad about it, Deontay Wilder doesn't even know this. He's talking like, everything's good, everything's fine. No, it ain't. You know what I mean? If everything was good and fine, why did he have to have a conference with his team yesterday? Or really the day before now, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, that just goes to show you, you know, they're coaching him a bunch of bullshit and they're they're not paying him. And he wants to talk about generational wealth. Dude, generational wealth is not what you're making. Because that money that he's made, what, I don't know, he might have made, I know it was like $16 million maybe his net, you know, and if he if he made four, he's guaranteed four, so he's it's about $20 million, you know. With all the children he has and his expenses, I don't know how he spends. I know he doesn't, you know, spend like Floyd Mayweather or Mike Tyson or someone like that, but those guys had wealth. They had money. Mike Tyson had hundreds of millions of dollars. So is Floyd Mayweather. We know this. So they can do stupid shit like that. Now, if Deontay Wilder, if he spends his money, even even at a certain degree like that, he won't have money to have generational wealth. He will be broke. You know, so the generational wealth part, when you see two other guys, three or four other guys, really, that and two other guys that's in your weight class, a part of the big three that are getting contracts. OK. And these contracts are huge. They're massive. And you're not getting shit. And the only thing you can come up with is, oh, greatness takes time. I'm going to be patient. What? You know what I mean? Like who is who the hell is brainwashing you? I mean, that that's what he has to be. He, he has to be brainwashed at this point. 
You know what I mean? But 78 Sports, I do give them credit because, you know, they're seeing the light. Like, dude, who the hell is going to give you a deal? What's Showtime Fox going to do for you? We covered that already, but he just re re reiterated to let you know this is a reality, that I'm not sitting here just bashing Deontay Wilder any chance I get. No, I'm trying to make sense out of the equation. So I'm here to help people with certain things. I might not say it in the nicest way, but at the end of the day, I see what's going on. I'm not a part of any group. I'm not not a biased, uh, uh, just a YouTube dude, but I do know and I do have common sense. OK, and common sense tells me if I'm the WBC heavyweight champ. And I'm looking at a guy that don't even have a belt that fought me to a draw. That got high off coke for two and a half years, go and sign a hundred million dollar contract. Where the hell is my contract? I got enough sense to know if someone claiming they had 50 million dollars to fight someone that that's opposing me my opposing opponent, I should have enough common sense to know where the hell is my cut? What are you, you giving him $50 million, supposedly, let's be real, and then where the hell is mine? I have enough common sense to know that. That is the first thing I thought of. Wait a minute. He said in an interview that you give me $50 million and you motherfuckers are half $50 million. So I'm cool with just someone giving 50 million. I have enough sense to know that. So if Deontay Watt, I feel bad for him because I feel that he's getting, he's either brainwashed or he's so damn arrogant with the shit that he's not accustomed to and he, ha and he has all of a sudden, you know, because that could be, you know what I'm saying? That's another analogy, another theory, you know, and because he could be like, he could really believe he's winning. Like, yeah, I am the shit. I can buy everything. I'm happy. I'm blessed. But you're not getting this or that. And the only thing you have to say is greatness takes time. Man, I tell you, that's crazy. That That's crazy. You know what I mean? It takes time. Generational wealth. Huh. Well, obviously, it didn't take the amount of time for Anthony Joshua or Tyson Fury. They're both younger than him. Right? And they're getting these deals. You know? I mean, like... Come on, man. Like, make this make sense, you know? And let me end it with this. 78 brought up the ticket resales, and he's like, yeah, that's the bullshit they try to do, and they try to act like they're elaborant and, you know, extravagant, and, and they really ain't, they ain't on the winning level, and this, that, and the other, and, you know, that type of shit. And I'm like, okay, if you, you guys, like, if Deontay Wilder, let me counterpunch you, brother. If Deontay Wilder thinks they are not what they supposed to be or not on the level that they really are on and they, they sell a lot of wolf tickets and smoking mirrors and stuff like that, you know, and if that's the case, you should be that particular person to shut all that down. See, my thing about Deontay Wilder, he go he comes off like somewhat of a Bernard Hopkins because remember Bernard Hopkins his he had a he was a guy he was a fighting guy but he was a fighting guy with a purpose you know he had a message you know hey you know stay out of prison you know obey the law and I'm going to put these politics and you know and bring these crooked promoters like Don King out on front street and I'm gonna do that by beating their fighters you know what I'm saying? And he did that. He beat Trinidad. He beat Keith Holmes. He beat William Joppy. He beat them all. Okay. But he had an idea because he knew, well, these guys, well, Don King is controlling all this shit and, and like a puppet on the string. Okay. Deontay Wilder claims to be that type of person in regards to Eddie Hearn because that's the type of animosity that he has towards Eddie Hearn. Right. Now, the only problem is he's just talking. Had, if he really believed what he said, he would have done things that it took to get those guys in the ring. You see what I'm saying? He should knock out Dillian White. He should go and fight Anthony Joshua and see if he can knock him out. That's how you do things. And then put these guys on front street. You know what I mean? But it's like he has no evidence of doing, you know, there's no evidence of those resales. You know, how are we going to know that? You know what I mean? Those tickets were bought, obviously. A record was set. We know that. So, you know, and, and it's going to come that criticism. And all. And if you 
And it's all if you do is criticize, but you have nothing to offer as a result to a solution. You know what I mean? Oh, none of these guys want to fight me. There's nobody like me. Nobody's a warrior no more like me. Well, obviously, you know, you're not really that much of a warrior because if you were that much of a warrior, you would have took the fight with AJ. He would have fought Deion, uh, uh, Dillian White. You know what I'm saying? He would have done those things. So to me, he's just talking a good game. And the interview sounded good. And don't get me wrong. It sounded like he was confident of himself. It sounded like he knew what the hell he was talking about, you know, and he really, I think he really believed what he was saying. You see what I'm saying? That's why you either got to be arrogant as shit or brainwashed, you know, and, um, the video, the interview was 20 minutes long. Um, look it up. I'm not going to put it down below. You know, I just wanted to counterpunch it because I heard him say that. But up to him, guys, to wrap it up, he still thinks it's gone. This fight can happen between Tyson Fury. He's still optimistic. So, you know, we'll see what happens. You know, um, but if the fight doesn't happen, be looking for Deontay Wilder to do what he always does. Call people cowards and don't fight them. But anyway... You guys tell me what you think about this video. Of course, please subscribe. And you guys have been counterpunched. Peace.